Quest Demon Hunter, quite possibly the strongest deck in the meta. I'm Uncorrupt, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to be able to play this deck a little bit better. Before we go any farther, I'm going to give you just a couple of the basics here. Uh, one thing that I always like to keep in mind with any deck that I'm playing is how does the deck win games. And this deck can actually win in three different ways. So the first way is just by hitting your opponent in the face and using spells on your opponent's face to be able to kill them. Way number two is going to be with a combination of Felderai Warband as well as Sinful Brand. You can actually double Sinful Brand a minion and then send the Warband face and then trade four minions into the Branded minion. It's going to be 20 damage. That's just a lot of damage. A lot of classes taking that much damage are just going to lose on the spot. And then the third way that we're going to be able to kill our opponent is with Lady Sotheno. And that, of course, could be with and also without the Abusive Sergeant buff here. So when you're playing this deck, I would encourage you to really free your mind. Don't tunnel vision on any one single way of being able to win the game. Just kind of look at the cards that your deck is giving you and then formulate your plan based on that. Yes, you can win with this deck on autopilot, but if you're really uh, engaged and focusing on the game, you're going to be able to win more games and you're going to be able to win games a little bit quicker if you're really, really paying attention here. This is the list that I've been running. It's teched for the Demon Hunter Mirror Match. Uh, there are other lists available. Feel free to check out hsreplay.net. There's a variety of different lists that are going to run just a couple of different cards, and you can kind of pick out the list that you think is going to work best for the meta that you're seeing in your rank on the ladder. Uh, Mulligan Guide for this deck, it's really straightforward, really simple. We're always keeping the quest. We also want to keep the Sigil of Alacrity, and we're going to be keeping the Mark of Scorn. And then in addition to that, we're also going to want to keep the Spectral Sight here. And one thing that you're going to notice with all three of these cards is that all three of them are actually card draw. In the early game, our general game plan is going to be that we want to draw cards, and it doesn't necessarily matter if we're able to complete the first and second step of the quest. That's kind of like a bonus. Making these cheap cards even cheaper is really strong, but in the early game, certainly we just want to draw cards and have access to the additional tools that are still going to be located in our deck. And uh, one other quick note here about the mulligan. Chaos Strike, um, this is card draw. It is on turn two. Uh, this card, by looking at the stats, is actually not a keep. It's very, very borderline. It's possible that we just don't have enough stats. Enough games haven't been played where this card has been kept. So I would probably lean towards maybe keeping it just because it is that early game card draw that we want to look for. But as of right now, the stats are saying that this card is very, very borderline as far as whether or not you would want to keep it. And with that, we're going to jump into the game and I'm going to get to explaining the deck. Two quick notes here before we get into the game. I've got some pre-recorded games here that I'm going to be showing you. I like to do it like this because it gives me the ability to be able to pause the game, expand on my thoughts without having to rush through a turn or focus on what my opponent is trying to do. And one other quick note here is I've actually got two different games that I'm going to be showing you. I cover different concepts in each game. They're different matchups. Highly encourage you to watch the video all the way through to the end. I know you're going to be itching to get out on the ladder and play this for yourself after watching the first game, but please just hang in there. Watch that second game. I guarantee you won't regret it. So in the first game here, um, my opponent is actually showing Priest, and I assumed right off the bat that this is a rogue. Uh, the last several days, all I've really been seeing are rogues and demon hunters. So uh, th this was a pretty easy assumption for me to assume that this was rogue. But the mulligan in this deck actually doesn't change no matter what class we're facing. So I'm still looking for the same cards. Again, we always keep the quest. We're looking for Sigil of Alacrity. We're looking for Mark of Scorn, Spectral Sight. And then again, Chaos Strike, probably, but maybe not kind of thing. We'll have to find out as we get more stats. So you can see here, always play the quest turn one. There's no need to do anything fancy where you hero power and then play the quest on turn two and hero power. You just don't need that extra damage because this deck has so much damage on its own. And I find out here on turn two that I am against a rogue. We see the potion belt and then our opponent is able to drop a null. So unfortunately, what you're going to see here in this game is that my draws actually haven't been all that good. I have no early game card draw, and it's turn three. I actually have nothing to do. Ideally, I'd like to be able to draw a card in some form, and I, I can't, so I'm going to hero power. And I'm just going to swing face here. Um, go ahead and start to get in that chip damage into my opponent's face. And uh, you can see that with their concoction here, they actually generate two uh, random cards from other classes that are going to be cheap. And so, uh, you know, things are progressing along, and I've assumed that this is going to be a Miracle Rogue because, uh, you know, all signs have pointed to Miracle Rogue here. And uh, what we're going to notice is that I'm actually just going to play this Feldori Warband. I really didn't even have to think about it all that much. I just wanted to go ahead and clear the Null off the board, um, simply because uh, when you're playing against these Miracle Rogue decks, um, they can actually just pressure you and, uh, and be able to kill you. 
uh, rather quickly from the board. So I do that just to be able to prevent taking damage. We don't actually have to have the Feldori Warband to win. It's just a tool that we can use. Sometimes we use that tool to be able to clear our opponent's board. So I'm actually going to take a quick pause right here, and you can see on my opponent's previous turn, he actually played Queen Ashara. This is a, a big red light to me that, hey, you're not actually facing Miracle Rogue. This is actually Jackpot Rogue. And this was the first indication that this was Jackpot rather than Miracle in the course of the game. So immediately, you know, I've kind of changed my mind about the way I'm thinking about the game. Against Miracle Rogue, we know they're going to be flooding the board with minions early, and we know that they're going to be making the very big stealth minions that are going to be coming off of the uh, the graveyards, the rogue location. And then there's always the possibility of a really big Edwin against Miracle. So that's what led me to the decision to be able to clear the Null. It was the correct play. I stand by it 100%. Now that I've seen Queen Ashara come down, I have to understand that this game is going to be a little bit slower. Uh, Jackpot Rogue, in a lot of cases, unless they just really, really scam hard, they're not going to be able to end the game as quickly as Miracle Rogue. That gives us a little bit more time to be able to kill our opponent, so you know I can kind of maybe relax a little bit and uh, change the way that I'm approaching this game. So, and uh, what we have here is just a really, really important turn, and this is where you know you have to expand your mind and really be able to think about things. So, we can see here we have two one ones on the board. And then we have the uh, Queen Ashara, that's a 5-5. Five, five. And then, of course, in hand, we have our second Feldori Warband, as well as a Sinful Brand. So Sinful Brand and a Warband that you can you know, clear all your min minions with, it's actually 12 damage. But I'm in kind of a rare situation with this deck that I have two existing 1-1s one -one still on the board that my opponent didn't clear. So when I, when I was looking at this turn, my gut instinct was Sinful Brand on the Queen Ashara, I'll be able to trade five minions into it with the Feldori Warband. That's going to be 10 damage, plus the four faces, 14. And then the remaining 1-1 one, one goes face. That's going to be 15 damage and set my opponent to 11. And I think it's very important with this deck. Again, you don't want to tunnel vision any one specific win condition. So there's going to be turns where you can get just a large chunk of damage into your opponent. And it's correct to just go ahead and do that. We want to cash in the damage while we can and while the board state is favorable. Um, you don't see it in this game, but specifically in games where you have Lady Satheno and you have a potential Satheno turn set up, you're not going to always OTK your opponent with Satheno. You don't necessarily have to kill them this turn. If you can play Satheno and clear whatever board your enemy has and deal 10, 12, 16 damage and set your opponent to single digit health, you know, a lot of times it's correct to just go ahead and cash in that damage, especially against decks that are going to be putting more minions on the board that's going to make it harder for your Satheno to actually hit your opponent in the face. You just want to go ahead and cash that damage in. We don't want to sit back, hold Satheno, try to accumulate a lot of cheap spells, and then go off and kill our opponent in a single turn. It's not the way we want to play this deck, so we're going to go ahead and cash in the damage while we can. Now, the important note about this turn is that I actually totally botch it and misplay it. I thought I was going to be setting up lethal, I was going to set my opponent to 11, and I was going to have 11 damage next turn, and I actually miscounted the damage. Uh, really embarrassing, but it happens. It happens at every rank. You'll see people misplaying, even in top 10 legends, so, you know, just keep that in mind. Everybody makes mistakes, and we got to learn from them, so hopefully you can learn from my mistake. I miscounted my damage. So the correct play for this turn would actually be to equip the Soul Eater Scythe, Hero Power, and Punch Face for 5. And then the one ones, of course, go face. So with that line, we would set our opponent to 19, and then we would be able to have 19 damage next turn, so we could actually set up lethal this turn if I had made the correct play. So we would set our opponent to 19. Then next turn, the Queen of Shara is still going to be on the board, at least with four health. We're also expecting a Colossal that's going to have you know, more than four health. But then next turn, we would still have four damage from the weapon. We would have the Dispose Evidence that's going to put us up to seven. And then we have the Warband Sinful Brand combination for an additional 12. It's going to be exactly 19 damage. I could have set up Lethal here, and I actually didn't. So you can see, I'm going to take the Sinful Brand and exactly the turn that I described. I'm going to set my opponent to 11 here. And I don't think I realized that I actually misplayed this turn until I tried to... Uh, well, I try to play my next turn, and I plan on just killing our opponent, so um, I just wanted to go ahead and take the damage. You know, Jackpot Rogue can always scam you. We know they're going to have a Colossal here. There could be a Reconnaissance. There could be a Jackpot, so our opponent has some different options, ways that they could scam us, but most likely, they're not going to discover a Taunt. They're not going to discover Healing, and so we're going to make the high percentage play and set up Lethal. Unfortunately, again, I just miscounted. I didn't actually set up Lethal, so as you can see here, my mind wasn't necessarily free, 
I didn't miscount. Uh, I miscounted my damage. I didn't say engaged, and I didn't make sure that I knew how much damage I had in hand. So you're going to want to get used to counting damage with this deck. So you're going to see here. I'm going to equip the weapon, and now I realize, oh, I can't actually kill him. I don't have enough mana to be able to do what I wanted to do. But I am going to be able to get nine damage. This is going to set our opponent to two health. It's going to set up lethal with things like the fell barrage that we still have in the deck, predation that's still in the deck. Um, and even uh, with a Bound Soul, we could be able to hit the Silver Moon Arcanist with the Unleash Fell in hand. And so, uh, you know, we really just have Lethal set up here. And you can see that uh, our opponents, they tried to go through some shenanigans, couldn't find anything, and they actually just give up. And so we win this game, but again, misplay on my part. That was a bit unfortunate. Jumping into the second game, again, just hang in there. I've got a couple of additional tips and tricks that I'm going to throw at you in this game. And you can see here that we're actually up against the Demon Hunter. This is going to be a mirror match. And with the mulligan here, so this I find to be pretty interesting. I'm keeping Spectral Sight because the stats are telling me that this card is a keep in the mulligan. The issue that I have in this specific situation is that Spectral Sight is on the far right of my hand. And the only way I'm ever going to be able to outcast it is if I can move it over to the far left. And so what I found in the past is that, you know, sometimes you're going to get your expensive cards like a Feldori Warband or the Soul Eater Scythe are actually going to be locking you out from being able to play that Spectral Sight from the outcast position on the left. I do think there's an argument that if it's in the far right, you actually toss it and try to get something different in the mulligan. Ultimately, I decided to keep it here. And you can see here with the way our hand is shaping up, um, it's kind of looking like I'm going to be playing Aldraki Warblades on three, and then I'll be able to trade the uh, Need for Greed on four, and then play the Spectral Sight on four as well. And then that's going to actually allow me to be able to complete the first stage of the quest here. So again, turn one, we always play the quest, and then we pass turn to our opponent. Um, being on the coin, I feel like you probably lose more on the coin in this mirror match. It feels like you're just better off going first and having that initiative. So I'm already feeling behind and especially seeing my opponent be able to play Sigil of Alacrity. This is the strongest uh, turn two that, this, that the deck can actually have when you're on the play. Um, if you have the coin, the strongest turn two that you can make would be to coin a Need for Greed that you drew that turn, draw a bunch of cards, discount them by completing stage one of the quest. But, uh, you know, I already feel behind, and I feel like my opponent is, uh, is drawing better. So I'm going to be looking for ways to be able to, uh, you know, do damage quickly and be able to come back in this matchup. One of the keys of the deck, just like with any deck when you're playing Hearthstone, is we want to be able to spend our mana. We want to spend mana, and we want to deal damage to our opponent's face, because we want to get closer and closer, really, to being able to kill them here. So um, our opponent waiting to see what they're going to do. And just looking at our hands, probably going to keep to the game plan here. Aldraki Warblades on three. We don't want to swing because we don't need the healing just yet, but then that's going to set us up to be able to, to complete the first step of the quest on turn four, which is probably just a little bit slow, but again, we just want to draw cards with this deck. And I'm not going to say that completing a step of the quest is incidental. Uh, you can plan it out to happen like that, but you can actually win games with this deck and never complete a single step of the quest. The quest just allows you to be able to play more cards in a single turn because it makes them cheaper, but there's already a lot of cheap damaging cards in the deck. If we happen to draw those cards, then we're going to be able to kill our opponent anyway, even without the discount. So again, free your mind and, uh, you know, just really consider the possibilities with the cards that are in hand. So you can see here, I've equipped the weapon and I choose not to swing because I don't need the healing yet. I could draw Fury. I could draw Chaos Strike and be able to get a larger heal. I don't want to waste that first weapon charge and only heal for two. Coming into turn four, we're just going to go ahead and draw our cards and complete the quest. Our opponent actually hero power passes on turn four. Um, I can't say for sure that this is a misplay without knowing what's in our opponent's hand, but it's hard to imagine that they could have six cards in hand and not have some type of play to be able to spend mana here. So really interesting play from our opponent. Don't exactly know again if it was a misplay or not, but definitely, definitely very interesting. And so I kind of felt like that uh, this was going to be, you know, my chance to be able to get back in the game here so i was able to complete a step of the quest when according to the plan here and i just go ahead and play the chaos strike i don't want to save that because it draws a card um, necessarily for the next turn i just want to go ahead and play it draw and be able to get the damage in now and then you can see i also go ahead and use the bound soul and specifically in this matchup i'm going to go ahead and take the satheno i now have the satheno in hand and at this point i'm actually going to want to be counting damage every single turn and so this is where it can get a little bit tricky with the deck the math is hard to do sometimes if you're not used to doing it um, especially when you add in the abusive sergeant buff so i'm going to want to be counting my damage every single turn for the rest of the game 
how much damage can I do if I go ahead and play the Sitheno, and that's going to be based on how much mana I have left, as well as how many spells that are going to be in hand here. So, again, we see our opponent actually just does nothing. It, again, it's just hard to believe that they can have that many cards in hand and, and just have nothing to do but hero power and go face. So, I'm starting to feel much more comfortable now, and I'm really starting to feel like I'm in the lead and I'm in the driver's seat in this particular game. Don't necessarily uh, know what our opponent could have in hand, but for whatever reason, they actually just decided to not play cards. Very, very interesting. And again, not necessarily a misplay, but it does just look kind of strange here. So uh, with this particular turn, I wanted to go ahead and get down the Sigil of Alacrity. I'm hoping to be able to discount a damaging spell so that I can get my Sathino out on the board. And before I actually made this play, I counted the damage from the Sathino here. So if I play Sathino, it would leave me with two mana left on the board. Um, I have two damage from the weapon is two, and then I would be able to uh, Predation, which is three plus two from the Sathino, that's five, that would give us seven. Then I would be able to uh, Dispose Evidence to ten, the Sathino hits again, which puts us to twelve. And then I believe we would have uh, one mana left over that we actually could not use except for a Hero Power, so it looked like this turn, I believe I was going to be capping out at thirteen, if I counted that correctly, but I'm going to be counting it every single turn. So. I decide here that I just want a Sigil of Alacrity. I considered using the Feldori Warband, but that's a play that I find sometimes doing that, it feels like a lot of other players that I watch play this deck will throw the Warband into their opponent's face. And I believe we're going to see that my opponent actually makes exactly that play on this turn. And I think that the play can be good, but can also actually work against you in this matchup. It could actually just be a misplay. So we're going to see what our opponent does here, and then I'm going to break down that decision just a little bit more. Ultimately, I decided to hold on to the Warband just because we do have uh, Sinful Brand in hand, which is, in this matchup, likely worthless because there's not going to be minions coming down. But then also we have in hand a Feast of Souls. And you can see here, our opponent, they played their Feldori Warband. So I try to put myself in the mind of being the opponent in this situation, and they probably realize now that two turns of doing nothing, they're behind, and they may actually be trying to set up lethal next turn, and they feel like they have to have that four damage into our face um, to be able to put themselves in a position to win. So it's possible our opponent was trying to play to their outs. Hey, I know I'm behind. I need to do damage. I need to set up lethal. You know, I have to do something now. And so they go ahead and play that. But what you're going to see is it's actually going to work against them in this game because it actually plays right into my hand with my own Feldori Warband and then Feast of Souls. So I'm going to be able to damage my opponent. I'm going to be able to clear their board. I'm going to deal four damage face. I'm going to draw four cards. And then I believe uh, what we're going to see here, the top deck I think is Sinful Brand. And so I'm going to go ahead and play these two Sinful Brands. They have no value in this matchup, so getting two damage each out of them by playing them on one ones is going to be the best that we can do here. So I'm going to Sinful Brand on two of the minions, and then I'm going to uh, Warband my opponent in the face. And then I'm going to Feast of Souls to be able to draw cards. That's going to complete step two of the quest. It's going to give me uh, a lot of cheap stuff in hand. And then I'm expecting to be able to kill my opponent just absolutely guaranteed next turn because of the amount of mana that we have. We already have Sathino. And then we have cheap spells, plus we have the weapon already equipped. That's going to be an additional four damage. And of course, uh, I still haven't actually swung here to be able to hit my opponent 4-4 four, four by having this weapon equipped. And a little bit of a debate here that I was having with myself is, do I want to go ahead and play this Unleashed Fell? It's zero mana. It's only one damage. If I wait till next turn and play it with a Sathino, it would be three damage, one from the spell, and then two from Sathino going face. Ultimately, I decide to just go ahead and play the Unleash Fell here. The reason why I do that is because it's going to heal me for one, because it's turn six, the Mana Thirst is active. That one point of healing can be the difference between winning and losing, especially in the Demon Hunter matchup, because of how much damage this deck can do. So I wanted to make sure that I got the healing, and then uh, just with the amount of damage that I have in my hands with all the other cards and Lady Sathino, I knew that I was going to have lethal. I didn't really need that extra two damage if I waited an additional turn, so wanted to play it as safe as I possibly could. And now it's up to our opponent. They're going to have to be able to kill us here. Otherwise, we just have lethal. Um, we have way over lethal with the Sathino. And you see here again, this is Sathino without the abusive sergeant buff. I've been able to just punch my opponent in the face, send damage into my opponent's face. This is going to be a really easy latest Sathino lethal. And I don't even need abusive sergeant. Now, some games you may find that abusive sergeant. Maybe you can actually lethal your opponent on turn five or turn six with the Lady Sathino being able to punch face for four every time you cast a spell. But again, free your mind, don't tunnel vision any one thing. 
play the cards that the deck is giving you. There's just so many different ways to be able to win with this deck. It's, uh, it's just really important to be able to stay engaged, stay focused on the game, and make the best play possible. You can see here our opponents, they're going to cash in uh, their healing as much as they can. They go back up to 15, and it actually just doesn't matter. I believe the top deck here is going to be a... Uh, it's an Unleash spell. I actually drew the uh, Bound Soul last turn, so I'm going to Bound Soul for the Abusive Sergeant. It doesn't even matter. Our opponent was just dead no matter what with all of these zero-cost damaging spells here. And then we're going to send this damage face and actually get the win. And that is actually going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Just remember, as you play this deck, make sure that you free your mind, play the cards that are being given to you by the game, and look for any of the different possible lethals that you can find with this deck. I'm Uncorrupt. Good luck out on the ladder.